Welcome back everyone. Today we'll be discussing about hereditary syndromic hearing loss. It will be divided into two separate lectures and today we'll be focusing on autosomal dominant causes. In the previous lecture, we discussed about non-syndromic hereditary hearing loss, which comprises about 70% of the cases. Now, let us focus on the 30% of the syndromic causes. Syndromic hearing loss can be subdivided into autosomal dominant, recessive, or X-linked. Examples of syndromes are as shown in this page. We'll be concentrating on the autosomal dominant conditions and discussing each of them individually. Whilst revising for these conditions, I will recommend that you look up pictures of individuals affected by each syndrome. I'm sorry that I'm not able to include pictures in this lecture due to copyright restrictions. Now, let us begin. The most common autosomal dominant syndromic hearing loss is caused by Wardenburg syndrome. It comprises about 2% of all congenital hearing impairment. Its typical features are varying degree of sensory neural hearing loss, pigmentation abnormality, and dystopia cantorum. If the pigmentation abnormality affects the eyes, they may suffer with heterochromia iridis, the hair with white forelock, and patchy skin deep pigmentation. Dystopia cantorum is broad prominent nasal root with increased intercantal distance, which is the most penetrating features of Wardenburg syndrome. Wardenburg syndrome can be subdivided into four types. Type 1 is presence of dystopia cantorum with PAX3 gene mutation in all patients and half of them have sensory neural hearing loss. Type 2 is patient without dystopia cantorum and 80% of them suffers with sensory neural hearing loss with a gene mutation of MITF or SNAI2. Type 3, patient will have an addition of limb or skeletal abnormality and some of them will have the PAX3 gene mutation. Last but not least is type 4, in which patient also suffers with Hirschsprung's disease. And this is attributed to gene mutation EDNRB, EDN3, or SOX10. Branchial autorenal syndrome, also known as the melnick fraser syndrome, is the second most common autosomal dominant syndromic hearing loss. Features that patient may present are hearing impairment, either conductive, sensory neural, or mixed hearing loss. They can also present with branchial cleft anomaly, such as cysts or fistulae, and external ear deformity such as preauricular pits, fistula, tacks, or pina deformity. Some patients suffer with middle ear uh, abnormality such as osteocular chain malformation and cochlear malformation such as Mondini dysplasia or enlarged vestibular aqueduct in inner ear deformity. They also can have kidney malformation and lacrimal duct stenosis. The renal pathology in this patient can be asymptomatic 
and only be detected through pilography or renal ultrasound. The common gene mutations involved are EYA1, SIX1, and The next syndrome we are going to discuss is Stickler syndrome, also known as hereditary arthroophthalmopathy. As its name suggests, there will be musculoskeletal signs and eye signs. This patient may have cataract, myopia, retinal detachment, together with hypermodular joints, scoliosis, hip disorder of childhood, and marfanoid habitus. They may also present with progressive sensory neural hearing loss with typical distinctive facial features such as a mid-face flatness, small chin with long upper lips. Some patients may suffer with Pierre Robin sequence which is a combination of micronesia, glossoptosis, and cleft palate. Patients with Stickler syndrome may suffer with early onset osteoarthritis as well as a mitral valve prolapse. This syndrome is caused by mutation in the collagen producing genes. It can be divided into four types of Stickler syndrome. Stickler syndrome 1 is caused by gene mutation COL2A1 and it represents 70% of all Stickler syndrome cases. Stickler syndrome type 2 has less prominent facial dysmorphism. However, they may have earlier and more severe onset of hearing loss as well as cataract in comparison to Stickler type 1. Stickler type 3 have no ophthalmic involvement, which is the non-ocular form of Stickler syndrome. Last but not least is Stickler type 4 and 5, which has an interesting autosomal recessive inheritance instead of the typical autosomal dominant in Stickler 1 to 3. Neurofibromatosis type 2 or NF2 is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder characterized by benign tumors of the nervous system. This is due to mutation in Merlin a tumor suppressor gene on chromosome 22. The hallmark feature of neurofibromatosis type 2 is bilateral vestibular schwannoma causing sensory neural hearing loss. Patient may also present with meningiomas and juvenile cataract. To diagnose neurofibromatosis type 2, patient either have bilateral vestibular schwannoma or a first degree relative with neurofibromatosis type 2 and unilateral vestibular schwannoma younger than the age of 30 years old or any of the two meningioma, glioma, schwannoma or juvenile cataract. Treacher Collins syndrome, also known as mandibulofacial dystostosis, is due to the mutation of the TCOF1 gene, which is involved in early craniofacial development, resulting in the malformation of the first and second branchial arches. It is also associated with other gene mutations, such as POLR1B, C, or D gene. Their features can be divided into craniofacial features and autological features. Examples are zygomatic hypoplasia, mandibular hypoplasia, cleft palate, micronesia, 
and coronal atresia. As for ear malformation, patient may present with pina deformity, external ear canal atresia, preauricular fistula, ossicular malformation, and aberrant facial nerve. The abnormality of the ear can cause conductive hearing loss in this patient. Appert syndrome, also known as acrocephalosyndactyly, as its name suggests, present with malformation of the skull, face, and extremity, such as the hands and feet. This is due to the mutation of the fibroblast growth factor receptor, which plays a critical role in skeletal development. Patient will present with cranial synostosis, which lead to distinctive facial abnormalities such as hyperthyroidism, which is increased distance between the eyes, proptosis, downslanting palpable fissures, saddle nose deformity, and coronal atresia. They may have underdeveloped mid-facial features such as maxillary hypoplasia and high arch palate. As for the extremities, they may complain of fused or webbed fingers. And last but not least, autological features such as cochlear and vestibular dysplasia, patent cochlear aqueduct, and stapes fixation. The last syndrome that we'll be discussing is Cruzon syndrome, also known as craniofacial dysostosis. It has the same genetic mutation to Appert syndrome, hence they share many similarities. The difference between Cruzon syndrome is it does not affect intelligence whilst Appert syndrome have varying developmental delay. On the other hand, Appert syndrome affects extremities such as the hands and legs whilst Cruzon syndrome do not. The typical features of Cruzon syndrome include cranial synostosis, mid-facial hypoplasia. Mainly, patient with Cruzon syndrome suffers with conductive hearing loss due to external or middle ear deformity. However, some patients do suffer from sensory neural hearing loss. An example of question that you may face in the exam is a patient presenting with conductive hearing loss associated with proptosis, down slanting palpable fissures, cleft palate, cell nose deformity, and right fused finger. What do you think is the most likely syndrome causing this problem? Wardenberg syndrome, Cruzon syndrome, Appert syndrome, Tritcher Collins syndrome, or neurofibromatosis type 2? The answer is Appert syndrome. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be discussing on syndromic autosomal recessive hereditary hearing loss in the next lecture, and I hope to see you all there.